Follow the mystic Noble Eightfold Path to Greatness and Achievement. There is a saying in mystic philosophy. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Always the great spiritual truths that have been revealed to the world have come to us from the eastern mystics, teachers, prophets, and seers. The western world has often accepted these great teachings, but in each instance, they have broken them up into various sects and creeds, which have dissipated some of the original value of the spiritual teachings revealed by these prophets and seers. In this chapter, we shall study one of the truly great revelations given to the world by the Buddha of India, who gave to the world the mystic Noble Eightfold Path, which can lead man to greatness and achievement. The Buddha was known as the Enlightened One, and his teachings form the basis of a philosophy, which has become a religion to three quarters of the people on earth. The arcane records of the mystical brotherhood show that the Christian mystic Jesus spent several years during his early life in the mystical land of India. We know that in the years that Jesus was missing from Jerusalem, he spent much time in Egypt, and then later, it is believed that he visited India and contacted some of the great teachers of that ancient land. There is an amazing similarity between the teachings of the mystic Jesus and those of the Buddha. The Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, the Golden Rule, are all given in much detail in the revelations of the Buddha who came to earth about 500 years before Jesus. The Four Noble Truths for Emancipation from Suffering Before you learn the mystic Noble Eightfold Path that can liberate you from the earth hindrances and bring you a life of greatness and achievement, you must know that there are four noble truths which give you immediate emancipation from suffering. These are First Noble Truth There is suffering in the world, and most suffering is caused by man's uncontrolled desires and sensual appetites. Second Noble Truth Suffering is caused by man's greed, selfishness, desires and worship of material and physical things. The Third Noble Truth The path to peace of mind and freedom from suffering is achieved through renunciation. This means giving up to a great extent of the eternal and restless quest for fame and fortune and social honors. The Fourth Noble Truth The Buddha called the Fourth Noble Truth the Way, the Truth and the Life. This revelation shows a formula for finding peace of mind and fulfillment through seeking the inner path the mystical approach to life. The Mystic, Noble Eightfold Path to Greatness Now you are ready to apply each of the mystic principles that lead you to a finding of the Noble Eightfold Path to Greatness and Achievement. 1. Right View or Understanding 2. Right Thought or Aspiration 3. Right Speech 4. Right Conduct 5. Right Means of Livelihood 6. Right Enterprise or Effort 7. Right Mental Control 8. Right Meditation and Contemplation How to Have the Right View of Life or Understanding See the true reality that is behind life. Each situation you find yourself in is impermanent and will soon pass. This can help free you from the shocks and disappointments that come when you discover you cannot hold on to anything in life. Your children grow up and go out on their own. Your money is never secure. The political scene is always changing, generally for the worse. Age creeps upon us, accidents occur, we lose our jobs. The mortgage on the home never seems to be paid off, money never quite goes far enough, and we can always use more and more. Find life's true reality within your consciousness. The Buddha taught that the only true reality that ever exists is within your own consciousness. You can shape and mold your personal life in the image and pattern of the things you hold as reality. You substitute spiritual reality for outer reality of dimension and form and substance and then you will know the world of spirit that is unchanging, eternal and immortal. Your soul becomes the only true spiritual reality. It cannot be poor or sick or die. It is eternally youthful and knows its ultimate destiny of glory and elevation. As the butterfly within the cocoon, when it reaches the chrysalis stage, 
knows that it is to one day emerge as a golden-winged butterfly, so too, man's immortal soul feels the stirring of the wings of the butterfly that will one day be freed from the earthbound cocoon of sin, sickness, suffering and death, to wing in way to the celestial heights and find its true immortality. This is the nirvana that is often referred to by Christians as heaven. Testimony number 28 Rita Y. Found the Right Understanding Rita Y. had suffered reversals of fortune and such bitter disappointments in life that she felt she had nothing more to live for. She turned to our studies in mysticism as a last resort to see if she could find a way out of her tragedies and suffering. Her first child was born retarded, and now at the age of six he needed so much care and attention that she hardly had time for her other two children, a boy and girl. To make matters worse, her husband could no longer face up to his responsibilities and deserted her. Rita had gone on welfare, as she could not work and care for her children. She finally yielded to pressure of relatives and placed her retarded son in a public institution. Also, Rita suffered from many different forms of illness, most of them induced by the pressures of life. She got up more tired than when she went to bed. She dragged her body through each day with dread and actual physical pain. Nothing seemed to help her, so she sought out our work to see what could be done for her. The first thing I had Rita do was change her mental viewpoint or understanding of her life. Her preconditioned mental attitude that she was born to suffer, that her child, who was retarded, was in some way suffering because of her sins, and that she could never rise above her problems and life karma. These negative viewpoints had already doomed her to a life of poverty, sickness and misery. Meditation for Finding the Soul's Reality I gave Rita the following meditation to use so that she could obtain a different understanding of her life situation. She was to do this meditation three times a day. I am now aware of my soul's true reality. I know that life is transitory and suffering exists in the physical and material realm. I now rise above this world of solid reality into the spiritual stratosphere where the soul resides in perfect peace and bliss. I now see the reality of good, not evil, in my life. I now see the reality of beauty, not ugliness. I create a mental atmosphere of optimism, not pessimism. I know that my life can change and reflect love happiness, not hate and discontent. Very soon, after she began to use this meditation to obtain the right view or understanding of her life situation, Rita began to change. As her consciousness became illumined, her seemingly hopeless situation seemed less burdensome, and she was soon able to find work that made her self-supporting. She met a man who fell in love with her at her work, and they married. The spiritual reality that Rita had projected through the above meditation became the outer reality of her life, and she was at last peaceful, healthy, and happy. How to have the right thoughts or aspirations your right thoughts and aspirations must consist of knowing life's true values and then aspiring to achieve them. Each day go over your thoughts and check them to see if they are causing you confusion and problems. Do you basically set a money value on everything in life? If so, then you are apt to be unhappy most of the time. Some people measure their content or discontent in life with whether they do or don't have sufficient money in the bank to make them feel secure. It is good to have a sense of money value, for money can buy most of the things in life that give comfort, health, and security, but money must not be thought of as absolutely essential to peace of mind and happiness. Have high aspirations to give you strong motivation in life. Have a desire to help your family to a better way of life. Educate your children to bring peace to the world, to create beauty for others to enjoy. These high aspirations will cause you to build a better world for yourself and for others. How to use the right speech to motivate your life. 1. Today, more than ever before, scientists realize that the speech we habitually use stamps our lives with an indelible pattern that reveals to the outer world what we are within. Emerson said, What you are speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. Our outer personalities and actions are determined by the patterns of speech we employ. If we habitually think and speak in a positive, successful manner, 
we automatically take on the attitudes of success and our actions follow suit. 2. Each day make it a point to declare, This will be my best day. Only good shall come to me today. 3. When you meet other people show your positive attitude towards life by using positive, happy, optimistic, and cheerful words. 4. Avoid using words that kill energy and enthusiasm. Such words as fail, sick, poor, unhappy, bad, hate, and other words that denote negative states of consciousness should be avoided in daily conversation. 5. When talking to those you wish to win or influence, use positive words that encourage and inspire them. Avoid criticizing them or discouraging them, even if you feel that they may be doing something wrong. You can help them more with a positive statement than one that kills their dreams or inspiration. 6. Practice speaking before a mirror so you can learn how to present your ideas to others with poise and conviction. Testimony number 29. Bruce T. Used the right speech for success. A real estate salesman, Bruce T., who was rather shy and not too successful, came to me for advice. I gave him a pattern of speech which he was to practice before his mirror each day for two weeks. In this speech, he was telling the would-be purchaser of a home why he should buy that house. He used only positive words in that rehearsed speech. He was told to believe in what he was saying. Within the next two weeks, Bruce began to sell more houses than formerly. He finally became one of the best salesmen in his office and doubled his income. How to use right conduct to shape your destiny. 1. The Ten Commandments have given civilization a code under which man can live in peace and prosperity. The spiritual laws that exist in the universe determine what is right or wrong conduct. We know that if we steal, or lie and cheat, something in life will punish us. If our conduct is high and moral, and we live under the right spiritual laws, then we are rewarded by being healthy, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. 2. Your conduct towards your fellow men should be governed by the spiritual revelation called the Golden Rule. This means that you shall do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The Golden Rule was given to the world in the revelations of the Buddha, and then five hundred years later, repeated in the teachings of Christ. 3. Right conduct also applies to the rules of morality and decency. Today, we see a great laxity in this moral code. The institution of marriage is threatened. Thousands of children are born out of wedlock and denied the love of parents. Society is undermined by these forces of modern permissiveness. A return to the old-fashioned standards of morality and decency is essential if we are to survive as a race. Testimony number 30 how Lillian D. overcame tragedy through mysticism. An instance of how suffering can be brought about when this rule of right conduct is violated was that of Lillian D., who was 22 years of age. She came into our work a very unhappy young lady. She had fallen in love with a young man who urged her to have a trial marriage by living together first. He promised that after six months' time they would be married if all went well. During that time, Lillian became pregnant, and the young man did not want to have a child, so he urged her to have an abortion. Her parents, being religious, objected and put up a struggle that finally alienated Lillian from them. She had the abortion, and then suffered such guilt feelings that she began to hate the young man. At the end of the six-month period, the young man left her and went to live with another young woman, and Lillian felt so miserable she wanted to die. An attempt at suicide was foiled, and she recovered in the hospital, a bitter and disillusioned young woman. She went back to her family and tried to renew her life again. She began a study of mysticism in our group, and in few weeks' time, her mental and spiritual wounds were healed. She is now on the road to complete recovery, and has found a fine young man who wants marriage and a family. How to Use the Right Means of Livelihood One. The Buddha taught that we must all work and be useful, 
or our lives are apt to fall into periods of boredom and discontent. Find work that you enjoy, for one-third of your life will be spent in productive activity. 2. Do not think any honest work is demeaning or beneath you. Lincoln started life as a rail splitter. Carnegie was a poor boy from Scotland and worked as a laborer in steel mills, learning the trade that later made him millions. No work is demeaning, but if you are in work you do not like, you must study something else until you are able to find your right work. Money obeys certain cosmic laws. 3. Do not think that you can get something for nothing or that you will get rich overnight. Money obeys certain cosmic laws and can only be obtained by exchanging your labor or your creative ideas for something of value, either money or goods. 4. Get as much education as you can. If forced to leave school early by circumstances beyond your control, enroll in evening high school and take courses in studies that interest you. 5. Remember, from the neck down as a laborer, a man is worth only a few dollars a day, but from the neck up, in the realm of the mind and ideas, a man can be worth millions. Try to rise into the realm of creative ideas in your work so you can give greater benefits to humanity and also enrich yourself. How to use right enterprise or effort to improve your life. 1. This principle relates to the value that one sets on achievement or effort that one makes to win a goal in life. One might ask, is it the making of the million dollars that brings a person enjoyment, or is it the million dollars itself? The Buddha taught that if one makes the right effort to win life's high goals and rich rewards, and lives according to the spiritual laws, it is not vitally important if a person achieves his goal or not. If a person enjoys his work, and if he contributes to the betterment of the world and is honest in his endeavors, such a person is more successful than one who wins worldwide acclaim and riches, but who may be miserable in his personal life. 2. Many people say one can only become rich by being dishonest. It seems true that such people often rise to high places, but soon the law of karma takes over and they suffer loss and privation because of their dishonesty. Al Capone may have built a fortune through his dishonest methods, but he became sick and was imprisoned because of his evil actions. 3. There are ten virtues that were given by the Buddha, which you can apply to your own life. These are Honesty, truthfulness, goodness, justice, mercy, compassion, idealism, forgiveness, charity, and love. When these ten virtues are applied to your life, then every enterprise or effort will be rewarded with success and eventual fulfillment. How to apply the right mental control to your life 1. The Buddha discovered a great psychological principle that modern science now confirms. It is that the control of one's thoughts and emotions is one of life's great accomplishments. Watch the thoughts that you permit to enter your mind. If these thoughts are negative, fearful, hateful, worrisome, and selfish, they will reflect in your outer actions and color your life with negativity. 2. Each day, check your thoughts at the door of the mind. Be sure that only happy, healthy, successful, and positive thoughts are allowed to enter your consciousness. How to Restore Peace and Serenity to a Troubled Mind 3. To clear your mind of these negative thoughts from the past, sit in quiet meditation and visualize your mind as a peaceful, quiet lake. Then, as you consciously think a disturbing thought, such as fear of an accident or worry about a debt, this negative thought will cause a ripple on the surface of your mental lake. As your thoughts become more negative and uncontrolled, this ripple becomes a giant wave until the surface of your mental lake is completely turbulent and can no longer accurately reflect the outer world of reality. 4. Now you can restore peace and serenity in your mental lake by pushing each disturbing wave or thought down into the body of the lake until the surface of the lake is once again calm and tranquil. 5. Control your thoughts each day by having practice sessions of meditation in which you choose a positive thought for that day. One day choose the thought of peace. All that day you will remind yourself to be peaceful and calm. 
The next day, choose beauty. Try to think beautiful thoughts all day and to see beauty in your environment, not ugliness. Another day, choose the emotion of happiness and search for happy events all day. In this way, you will soon train yourself to control your thoughts and perpetually be in a state of balance and harmony. How to have the right meditation and contemplation 1. A great deal of time is spent in mystic philosophy in meditation and contemplation. This is sometimes called spiritual ecstasy or rapture in the Buddhist teachings. It is in meditation that one reaches the highest state of consciousness that the human mind may achieve. 2. You should go into a quiet meditation at least once a day, although it is possible to do a quick form of meditation several times a day. 3. Before going into meditation, you can recite the mystical mantra used in India and Tibet, which is Aum Main Padme Aum. This means the jewel in the heart of the lotus and relates to the soul that reflects the divine presence within man. 4. Then close your eyes after intoning the mystical mantra five times and give yourself a silent meditation using words that you can make up or a memorized ritual such as the following. I am now peaceful and calm. I am yoked to the absolute power behind life. I reflect the presence of God in my soul. I relax and let the presence work through my mind, my body, and my emotions. My soul now pulsates with the soul of the universe, and I am in harmony with all the forces behind time and space. How to use contemplation to bring spiritual perception. 5. Contemplation is a little different from meditation. It is to think deeply about something, or to ponder over some specific subject, and it can be indulged in daily to bring you greater comprehension and spiritual perception. 6. On one day, you can contemplate the mind in all its aspects conscious, subconscious, and superconscious mind, letting your mind dwell on each state of consciousness. Many new and interesting revelations will come through to you. 7. On another day, you can contemplate the body, see its miraculous workings, affirm its state of good health, youthful vitality, and longevity. 8. On still another day, you can contemplate your emotions, affirming the positive emotions of faith, hope, charity, love, optimism, courage, forgiveness, goodness, and idealism. 9. On the next day, you can contemplate the mystery of your soul, the nature of God, and the true purpose behind your life. This regimen for seeking out the mystic noble eightfold path to achievement and greatness will work miracles in your life. Apply these principles to your life from now on, and you will see the transformation that will take place. Mystomatic Pointers 1. In applying the principle of renunciation, remember, this does not mean giving up all ambition in life. You can win the White House, but don't expect it to last forever. Ambition should be used judiciously so as not to induce suffering. 2. The inner mystic path, or the way as the Buddha called it, means living a great deal in the world of the mind, in the realm of ideas and concepts, rather than material and physical things. 3. Control your desires and appetites, do not let them control you. It is all right to have normal desires for wealth, success, happiness, and love, but do not let any of these get out of control. 4. In finding the mystic path, learn to spend a great deal of time in mystic meditation and contemplation on the permanent values of life. These include art, music, literature, philosophy, and wisdom in general. 5. Live under the Golden Rule and the Ten Commandments, and you will find the inner pathway to peace and contentment. 6. Work out your negative karma by doing kind acts and being loving, forgiving and understanding of others. 7. Build your positive karma in this lifetime by being aware of your weaknesses and then work to correct these. Good overcomes evil. Love overcomes hate. Charity overcomes selfishness. 8. Do not be ashamed of any work that is honest. Look on your present work as a stepping stone to greatness. 9. 
Realize that this world is a testing ground for your soul. Meet life's challenges with poise and equanimity.